this episode of Speed Addicts Garage, we're taking the cylinder head off of the 2JZ. Welcome back to Speed Addicts Garage. Today, we're going to start removing the cylinder head and the intake manifold on this episode. We got to take that stuff off, take it to the machine shop, and... crusty look inside of there we got a lot of cleaning to do all right guys and girls uh, if you don't remember last episode or maybe two episodes ago we was gonna do the compression test on the Supra but we didn't have our compression gauge so um, I brought my compression gauge that's what it looks like uh, basically you turn the motor over with throttle wide open um, and it tells you your compression. Uh, that, that's the part that goes into the spark plug hole. So uh, I hooked the battery back up. I disconnect the fuel and let's check the compression. I don't like pushing down the accelerator pedal so I wedge my 14 millimeter in between the throttle blade. One less step I gotta do. Cylinder one looks like 160. What you think? Cylinder number one, 160. Cylinder number two, 170. 170. Cylinder number three. I don't want to move it, but that's 160. One, there we go. That's 160 also. One sixty-five. Cylinder number four, one sixty-five. Cylinder five, one fifty. Cylinder five. 150. That's 170. Last cylinder, cylinder number six, 170. And as you can tell, weird turbo. It looks like the normal compression is somewhere around the 156. The minimum variance right there, turbo, is 128. So, uh, we're in good standings. Our lowest number was 150-ish or so. Highest was 170. Um, I mean, I think we got a, a healthy motor, so let's, let's continue. I'm gonna set this puppy at TDC, top dead center. Um, it's really hard to tell, but uh, that painted mark is lined up with the zero. And then if you look at the uh, exhaust cam gear, uh, you got a little line right there that matches with that little divot on the back of that timing plate. And if you go to the intake cam, you got the same, the same deal. So I'm going to do one more thing to verify. The last thing I do is take something long, like a long screwdriver. I mean, you can get something a little more fragile if you want. But basically, drop it down there in cylinder number one. And it basically stops. I mean, that's the top of the piston. So, we're at TDC. Okay, we're to the point now where um, we want to take the timing belt off. And in order to do that, you have to remove this crank pulley. In order to remove the crank pulley, you got to remove this 24 millimeter crank pulley bolt. Um, normally, you could take a crank pulley bolt off with an impact tool, um, 
half inch or whatnot and you have no problem but for whatever reason this crank pulley bolt is toy okay so i'm gonna show you a trick that requires no tools um in order to take this off and you can actually use your uh, something you already have which is the serpentine belt take your belt go underneath the water pump pulley and then take the belt and go around all the rest of the other pulleys okay and what you're going to do is kind of keep your hand over here to the right to keep the belt into place or whatever and take your finger uh, up underneath the water pump pulley over top of the serpentine belt and carry that belt underneath the crank pulley bolt um, you know as you do this you kind of got to be good with your hands and uh, and what's going to end up happening is is that belt is going to as you turn it counterclockwise it's going to create tension on itself so as I got my right finger on the belt I'm starting to turn this crank to the point where it's tight so watch me bust this bolt loose There you go. Crank pulley bolt is now loose. puppies look like they got a bunch of age on them i mean look at all that crud so uh where are we taking these two that's gonna clean up real nice and these bad boys right here one and two they're going bye bye we got something else to put in that place to the best of us but i got a stripped head bolt um these things are torx like a torx 55 uh sometimes you can use an allen wrench but daggone there was so much gunk in there that it freaking rounded it off the inside so um i've never never ran across this before so i'm gonna have to improvise and see if i can make something work so um i got an idea i'll be right back in order to take 
a stripped cylinder head bolt out of a 2JZ. We're gonna use a Dremel, that's optional. A junk, or not that I like very much, 7 16th um, hex socket. An extension that you don't like. I like this one, so I didn't use it, but for demonstration purposes, extension. And a three pound sledgehammer. So let's take off this strip cylinder head bolt. I got my PPE on. Let's get down to drilling. Uh, I'm sorry, Adam. Yes, it worked. Heck yeah. I hammered the mess out of a 716. I took the Dremel, opened it up a little bit, and I beat the mess out of this 716 hex and put it in there, and it came out. Heck yeah. There we have it. I got the second one out too. Sweet. Let me get my socket back. There you go. I used that old three pound and made my own pattern. All right, let's get to taking the cylinder head off again. triple fly I don't know correct me if I'm wrong but all I know is that this is definitely um, a good OEM head gasket and that's why we're gonna be replacing it with an OEM head gasket no comedic stuff here none of that aftermarket um, this Toyota 2JZ head gasket is a, is a proven head gasket so um, this junk is going away well, there you have it, guys. Taking the uh, cylinder head off the 2JZ was a success. Um, had a few little setbacks with the two boogered up head studs due to the sludge uh, from the lack of oil changes from the previous owner. But uh, that's no problem. We got them off. Next episode, we're going to stop by, drop them off at my buddy's machine shop, and uh, don't go too far. There's a lot more in store, and there's a lot more parts going on this build. Thank you for stopping by. Speed Addicts Garage. See you next time.